Good morning, everyone. I just want to show you my finished product, uh, not so finished, of my candling of beeswax. Uh, the wicks need to be trimmed down, sort of like they are on this one over here. Uh, it's a hard job. I'm never going to do it again, unless it's for a hobby, just something to do. It's pretty messy. And uh, so I'm going to cut everything down to just a little bit, like less than about an inch over. I have to look it up to see exactly how low it's got to go. These sticks here, they were supposed to be, you know, for crackling and all that. But when I used it the other day, it really burnt down a little too quick. So I decided I can't put the felt in there without the stick supporting it. So what the heck? I did a little invention. But I do have to clip everything down here. And this, this candle is probably going to burn a lot longer than what they say beeswax candles burn. Uh, this candle, I think if I were to look it up, it would probably tell me it will burn for at least 72 hours. And this one probably for uh, at least five days, I think. Uh, I, I know they're supposed to burn uh, a lot longer. I have made, it's not my first time around making beeswax. And in my experience, it, they didn't, learn, they didn't uh, last as long as they're saying. But just in case I was wrong, I decided, besides having my tapered candles, which those burn very slowly, and they do sell beeswax tapered uh, candles as well, uh, which next time I'm going that route because just the shipping and handling and the cost of this beeswax, it was a project and an expense. And I might as well just pay a little bit more for the candles to come already made. So that's my project next time, zero project. So I'm going to trim these down to here again. Uh, I got the crackling wood here. I got the um, beeswax uh, uh, organic uh, uh, cotton wicks that they, hopefully they're all supposed to be healthy for the air and for you to breathe. Now, I, I, I thought, you know, what if I lose heat in the house, right? I've been really um, uh, kicking myself about that. What happens if I need lose heat? So let me just show you. Um, I bought this, um, th this is, uh, like, uh, it's to create a, it starts a fire, but it stays on for a long time. This is supposed to last a long time and it's called Landical if you want to order it. Okay. And there's a bunch of this that would probably help you make a fire and stay warm for a while. And so I figured, you know what, why not use one of these, um, I forget if you want to make s'more s'mores, right? And I would put some of this in here and pour some of this on top of that little cotton and let it burn. And I could also use it as a cooker, okay? Now, what I would do, however, in doing all of this, uh, this is uh, the alcohol that I would use in this combination here. I would always put something, whatever is flammable, uh, put this felt charcoal right underneath this over here so let me give you a little illustration i know i'm a little uh one-handed here um short-handed if you want to call that okay short-handedness okay so now let me just uh pause this for a minute here okay so this is a better way to illustrate it i will put this felt this thick felt uh, which is a fire stopper, okay? If you're going to do this inside or on your deck, you always use felt underneath it, okay? Uh, this is charcoal felt. It would stop a fire, okay? Uh, and then I have also this. I would always have something handy like this, which would stop a fire. All you got to do is... Uh, better use this one instead. You see these things? You pull both of these down. And instead of using one of those fire extinguishers, which I actually have, okay, so I do have fire extinguishers, but they, these things are a thing from the past. And by the way, they always say they expire, but that's just about making money. They don't really expire. I would always still use them, okay? So what I would do is I would pull these two things down. Instead of pulling the pin over here and spraying, I would instead pull these things down, grab a blanket that's inside, and you would throw that blanket over the fire and it would suffocate the fire. But you should also wear these gloves because these gloves will protect you from burning. This is not regular construction or gardening gloves. It's made out of a special material. As you can see, uh, you, you, uh, let's see what it says there. N, N818 
and it says, uh, so it's really for your protection for fire. It's made for that, okay? So you put this on, you pull this out, the, out comes the blanket, put on the gloves, throw the blanket over the fire, the place that the hazardous place, which by the way, should be sitting over one of these charcoal felt pads, okay? For your protection, so you don't burn anything around you. And you should actually always have this in your kitchen or these things. But quite frankly, this is the new age thing. It takes less space. You just throw it over. It doesn't hurt to have everything. Okay. And so also, uh, I could get myself, uh, uh, what do you call it? Those cooking baskets. Uh, I mean, I'm not thinking right. Those camping, camping, uh, uh, camping, uh, stoves, right? So anyway, uh, if you use a, a camping stove, uh, you may want to stack up on butane. Uh, I saw for a very good price, like four of these for $7. Um, because I do have a couple of those, uh, butane stoves that I could actually use it under here. Um, and so just having fuel, having protection, uh, for your emergency needs, it's never a bad idea. Put God first, don't fear. But I think that just like Jesus uh, shared that parable about the the 12 virgins with the oil running out, we got to be prepared spiritually first, or, for, first and foremost, okay? That's the most important thing. But in our daily life, it doesn't hurt to know how to navigate <laughs> our needs uh, by using what uh, the primitives used to use, right? Uh, and these are healthy things. Um, this is the best and cleanest alcohol fuel I was able to find. Uh, the cottons, wherever that went to. Uh, I'm not sure what it's called, but you can look it up. I read in a lot about it, but the fact is <laughs> that it doesn't all stay in my brain. I will be glad to share some links. I'm going to share some pictures of what I mean about a camp stove. Uh, being prepared to protect yourself both at home, especially if you have children or if it's more than one person living in your house. Because if one person coordinates things, the other person really doesn't fully understand uh, what it's about and can make mistakes. So it's not a bad idea, just like they do in workplaces, have a fire drill kind of thing practice. And that's what I'm doing here. Bringing some and sharing some knowledge that black charcoal felt you see back there, which is the same thing you see here. If you're going to cook outside of your stove, it's a great idea to put this underneath all the stuff you're cooking under to protect you in case there's a, a piece of fire or flame spills over. It'll spill on this. This will stop it. Carry the blanket to blanket the fire over the fire and it'll extinguish it much faster than a fire extinguisher and it won't be messy. Uh, carry some butane fuel because if you have lighters or if you have... Uh, different things that may need it, including a camp stove, uh, in case you're out of electricity and stuff. It doesn't hurt to have this fuel, that fuel, and I have also propane tanks outside, um, all for an emergency. It's not even for luxury. I'm not using it during the summer, which I should, because it's quite hot here. Uh, it's the worst summer, but here in the Poconos, the worst summer is really a great summer for most people because um, it's really cool up here. And in the summer, you actually need a blanket. So I want to thank you for joining me. And I hope that you can appreciate all of this knowledge I am sharing with you uh, as much as I possibly can. Although there's a lot more that I probably have not fully shared with you. But you have a great day and thank you for watching. Please give it a thumbs up and share this video. Bye now.